Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about movement production, or in other words, how the body produces movement. In the rehab world, we call this motor control. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, or you've watched a lot of my videos, you may think that my videos focus on how to strengthen a specific muscle. And sometimes you might even see the name of a specific muscle in a title. I try not to do that because for the most part, that is not the goal of my videos. The topics that I cover in my videos are really centered around the idea or are designed to help you learn a new skill or perform affect a skill. So just curious, do you think that most of the videos are centered on strengthening a specific muscle? Go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Or currently, is your rehab or your recovery, is your mindset to find the best exercises to strengthen a muscle? I'm just curious to know how many have this view that rehab or relearning how to walk, get out of a chair, get in and out of a car, get dressed. How many in this community think that that has to do with strengthening certain muscles? Because my current thought is that there is a lot of you out there that do think that. But nope, that is not the foundation of knowledge or information that I use when I am explaining to you or teaching you how to get better at performing a certain movement. And this is why you'll never really hear me say or make recommendations such as do three sets of 10 or you'll never hear me use the word one rep max or periodization because all of those terms are really based on theories for muscle strengthening or how to make a muscle bigger. My goal for you is not how to make a muscle bigger, but how to learn coordinated, efficient, goal-directed movements that is centered around the concept of the flow of information within the nervous system. Once you understand this, how you approach your home exercise routine and how you do your research to find the best exercises for you might be completely flipped upside down, but in a good way. And this reframing of how you are approaching or how you're thinking about your routine or your home exercise routine or your recovery will completely transform and improve and maybe even you will exceed your own expectations of what you are capable of. But before we dive into that and unpack that, if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And now let's go ahead and dive deep into this topic that I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty passionate about, but I'm also very excited about helping you understand it because I really do think it's gonna transform your recovery. So why am I so, so passionate about helping all of you understand this idea of motor control? Well, most of it has to do with the fact that more often than not, I've been having people on this channel and patients in my clinic ask me questions specifically on how to strengthen a specific muscle or group of muscles with the thought process that if they strengthen this one muscle, they are going to achieve their goal of perfecting a skilled movement. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. And actually, the inspiration for this video was kind of a back and forth comment slash conversation that I had with one of the viewers and it actually led me to believe that there are a lot of you out there that share his viewpoint and so i thought why not just make it an entire video but i'm hoping that by watching this video you will understand why it is so 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 important to get the focus the hyper focus the small lens off of the muscle and to open your lens up to the much bigger picture and that bigger picture really, really, really centers on the experiences that your body is going through and practice, practice, practice. So the analogy I like to use to really further help you understand this concept or this idea or the difference between motor control and muscle strengthening is a car. 
So let's assume that we are not to the place yet where there are self-driving cars, because to be honest with you, I don't really think I'm ready for that anyway. But let's assume that a physical car still needs a physical human being behind the steering wheel. Now, focusing on muscle strengthening is very similar to someone just putting a bigger and bigger motor in the car or making the car perform better and thinking that that is going to get that car to the destination faster, more efficiently, and safely. And really that's not the case. You can have the best car in the world, but if you don't have a skilled driver operating that vehicle, the motor means nothing. So if we can relate the driver to the actual controller of the car being similar to motor control or how your brain controls movement, just like a driver needs experience navigating the road, needs the knowledge and the information to know where they are going and how to get there. I digress here a little bit, but that is why I spend so much time explaining the why so that you understand the goal or the route to get to your goal, just like that driver needs to know the route in order to accomplish the goal of operating that car to get to the destination. And the driver also needs practice. The more we drive, the more experienced we become, and the easier driving becomes. So I hope that made sense. Kind of cute, we're gonna put that car analogy on the back burner for now, but we're going to come back to that. Now, as I was putting this video together, or kind of putting my thoughts down on paper as to what I wanted to cover in this video, I felt like it was not complete enough to just talk about motor control without also talking about the concept or the idea or the theory on motor learning. Motor learning is how we acquire a new skilled movement. Now, why is this important? Again, let's go back to to that driver. There's so many things that that driver needs to know. He doesn't need to just know how to operate the car, but he also needs to know the route that he's going to go down in order to get to his destination. So understanding motor learning and understanding the process that your brain is going through and your body is going through to acquire that new skill, I think is equally as important. So every new skill that someone's trying to learn or perfect, their brain and their body is going through a process that's broken down into three phases. There's the cognitive phase or the thinking phase, there's the associative phase, and then there is the autonomous phase. Now in the first phase of learning a skill, the cognitive phase, there's a lot of thinking that's required and skills aren't really easy. They take a little bit more effort and you're not as consistent and you're not as accurate. However, the goal is to practice, practice, practice in order to get from that first stage of learning into the second stage, which we call the associative stage. And in this stage, it requires a little bit less thinking. You become a little bit more accurate with your movements, a little bit more consistent, and they tend to require less effort. And then the golden ticket, the final stage of learning is the autonomous stage. In this stage, things or skills should be very consistent, pretty accurate, not require a lot of effort, and almost be automatic. Now let's go back to that driver. I It makes me think of me as a 16 year old driver or anyone is a 16 year old driver. A lot of thinking going on. You might not take the most efficient route to get to your destination. You're talking to yourself a lot. When to use the blinkers, when to use the brake, when to press the gas. There's so much information that you're having to play over in your head because driving is new to you. And it does require a little bit more effort. But as you gain practice and experience, or as I gained practice and experience, driving almost became automatic. Remember, we're making this analogy of the driver being very similar to the brain and the process that the brain goes through to get to an automatic stage in directing a skilled movement. So everything about how that driver operates that car just becomes easy. So the perfect example, I will embarrassingly share, sometimes on a Saturday or a day when I don't need to go to work, I will actually end up at my office. Because driving now is more automatic, I don't really think about my blinkers, I don't really think about having to stop at a traffic light, things like that, I'm almost an autopilot. If I get far enough down the route that takes me to my office, 
If I'm not paying attention, I'm not thinking, I just end up there. And that is because I've achieved that golden ticket area where that activity or that goal or operating my car to get to a destination is automatic, almost to a fault. But that is the same thing that goes on when you are learning a new skill. So why do I tell you all that? Because if you are staying in therapy, working with a therapist for years and years and years and years and years, and the therapist is taking you through all these motions every single session, and you aren't doing anything outside of therapy, that would be like me sitting in the back seat of a car and having a driver drive me to work every day and a thinking or assuming that at any moment I could just jump in that driver's seat and I'm gonna just be an autopilot and end up at work. No, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna start back at the beginning, have to think about each turn, think about the traffic lights, think about the route, and it's gonna be hard. But on the flip side, the more I drive that route, the more you practice every day, the better you are going to get at learning that skill and getting to that automatic phase, which remember, I defined as being effortless, being accurate, you being consistent regardless of what it is, of where you wanna place your foot, how you wanna swing your leg through when you're walking, how you wanna step up onto a curb, how you wanna step up off of a curb. Right now, those things probably take a ton of thinking, but if you stick with it and keep doing it over and over and over again, and you are paying attention to how you are accomplishing it when you get it right, or you're paying attention in therapy to how the therapist facilitating certain things, how that feels, you are going to learn that skill. However, now let's get back to the muscle strengthening just one last time, because I know I keep bringing this up. Let's say your therapist does use a term like your glutes are weak or your tricep is weak, because I'm guilty of that too. I use those terms too. I don't ever not use the word you have a weak muscle or you need to strengthen X, Y, or Z muscle. Yes, there are occasions where I might even in therapy focus on certain muscle groups. Remember, that's zooming in. You need to now zoom out and go back to motor control which again, motor control is the flow of information through the nervous system. Information coming in, information going out, information about your surroundings. And that's not gonna get accomplished in three sets of 10. That's gonna get accomplished doing repetition after repetition after repetition. And I am so, so confident that if you understand this, and you can make that transition between zooming in and zooming out. So zooming in maybe occasionally on a muscle or some soft tissue work, maybe you get massages, things like that to lengthen muscle. But you can also zoom out and pay attention to that flow of information through your nervous system. The sky is the limit on what you can accomplish. And the sky is the limit on how much you're gonna be able to do your own research and find the best exercises for you to achieve the skills or the voluntary movements that you are trying to perform. So I hope all that made sense. I wanna thank you all again so, so much for continuing to watch these videos, especially if you made it to the end of this one. Again, I think it's a super duper important topic, so I hope you guys all found it helpful. If you're new to my channel, once again, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. I post one video every week to help you enhance your recovery from whatever injury you have suffered. And lots of great information if you are dealing with a movement disorder. Next week's video, we're going to get back on track with some more exercises and I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite exercises to help improve your posture. I hope you all will look forward to that video next week. And that is it for today. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You all have a great day.